It is good to see all of you. And I want to let you know this morning that uh, we no longer have to wear masks, so it's optional here at Morgan's Point uh, United Church. You can remain in your mask throughout the wor worship if you want, that's just fine. Or if you want to cast it aside, know that that's perfectly okay as well. So uh, I'd also like to uh, ask that um, any folks who may have taken praise books home while we were on lockdown, I think about a year ago, and used it for singing, we're a little short of our praise books right now. So if they could be returned, and I'd like you to um, just notice the beautiful flower arrangements that come to us from uh, the Ron Gibson family. Uh, we had a, a wonderful celebration of life uh, over the weekend. So they are here reminding us that God it continues to be present with in our memory of Ron. So let us take time now to just allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to come into our hearts, to help us to settle down, let everything go, and be at peace, be at one, as we enter into holy ministry. Mm -hmm. through the wilderness with Jesus at our side, knowing that you were watching and caring for us each step of the way. May we have ears to hear, or to hear with our hearts, ears, and minds today. May we hear your word for us and respond in love, gentleness, goodness. We ask that you be with us now in this moment in time 
and we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. delighted to be able to um, read them to you. Our first one comes from Ruth, and Ruth writes to us, What would I have done these past years without the love of my God, our church friends, our family, and Pastor Laura? It has been a rocky road. And we have traveled, but with the support and love of everyone, we have finally laid on to rest in peace. He loved each and every one of his church friends and was hoping one day to be able to come back and sing one more solo. God had other plans. A special thank you to Pastor Laura for her wonderful message on Friday. I know Ron heard her words. To those who helped with the funeral lunch, to our friends who sent cards, phone calls, meals, delivered, and especially the visits made to cheer Ron. He was still able to recognize who was there up until two days before he passed. He is now safe in the arms of Jesus. And I am praying he is singing, How Great Thou Art, in his loudest voice. He is at peace. Thank you, one and all. God is good. And then we've got um, a God is good from Jessica. I received it last night. And Jessica writes to us. Uh, Jessica uh, tells us that her roommate at the University of Waterloo was extremely sick. And it turned out that she had COVID. Jessica says she lives in a double room. So she is in very close contact with her roommate. Her roommate went home after Jessica was exposed to her 
for one full day. Jessica was a little sick for two days, but her rapid test kept on coming out naked. Of. With many prayers and blessings, though, Jessica did not get COVID, as she is now feeling normal, and all of her symptoms have been long gone. Jessica tells us, God was able to fight my battle with sickness, and I'm praying that God battles everyone's sicknesses at the churches as well. And thank you to Jessica for that. And then we have a wonderful God's goodness from Bruce. And Bruce writes to us, Two weeks ago, I was blessed to travel to Napanee with my sister, my nephew, and his wife to visit two of my brothers and some of their family. I had not seen most of the family in years. It was a wonderful trip, built with plenty of laughter and marathon crocodile and card games. I really miss them all, and I am so grateful to God to have this time with them. God is good. And all the time. Amen to that. Amen. Okay, the young at heart time. I am so glad to see you. Are you happy to finally be without a mask? <laughs> we can see everybody's beautiful smiles now. Well, I want to tell you a story that we're going to be, the, the young at hearts are going to be hearing a little later in the service. And it, uh, it's Jesus' story about a man a dad and his, his a dad and his two sons and that dad really loved his son and uh, but the one son the younger son well he thought he had enough of his dad at home and he thought he was just gonna get up and leave home and so he asked his dad for all the money that his dad would give him in his lifetime and he took it and off he went to a different distant country and you know what it's not like he worked at all or, or did anything productive he just kind of lounged around ate spent the money and pretty soon do you know what happened you're totally right. You are totally right. He spent it all. It was kaput. Nothing left. And so then he had to think, well, what am I going to do now? And he thought about how kind his dad was to all the people who worked for him. And he thought, I know that I wasn't fair to them. And I so, but I shouldn't. But maybe if I go back to Dad and tell him how sorry I am, Dad will let me come home and not even worry about treating me like a son, but I could just work for Dad and Dad would treat me fair. So the young boy ran home. Well, what do you suppose his dad did? He, he, he would have too, that's part of the story, he would have made him work, but before he did, he ran out to him as fast as he could, and he grabbed him in his arms, and he told him he loved him. He told him he loved him, and then he brought him home, and they had a great big party. And you know what I want you to remember always, this week and every week, that it doesn't matter how many times we make mistakes, God loves us anyway. 
and always welcomes us back right into God's loving arms. So we don't ever have to worry about that. God is, we can never do anything that would take us away from the love of God. Do you remember that this week, okay? Oh, all right, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for loving each one of us. We thank you for, for forgiving us when we do wrong things. And we thank you for always welcoming back us into your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There we go. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the Hebrew scripture. I'm reading from Psalm 32, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no inequity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all who are faithful offer prayers to you, at a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule, without understanding whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. 
Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. Amen. Now let us have a time now of quiet musical reflection. Our second reading comes from the New Testament in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, and 11b to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger man gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed the pigs. Oh, he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare. But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set up and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and kissed, he, oh, pardon me, he ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slave, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his older son in the field was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come home and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back, Satan's son. Well, then he go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. 
Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you were always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. May God bless these readings to our understanding and to God's name be all honor and glory this day and forever. Amen. wonder if the younger son was surprised when his father gave him his inheritance. This is not like asking for an advance on a line. The son's request had real significance. The son is saying to his dad, you are dead me. I do not need you. I just want your stuff. The son has separated himself from his father. Their relationship is now different. The son has rejected and dishonored not only his father, but the entire village. He has hurt, shamed, and disowned them. Every resident in the village now stands as a reason the son cannot return home. If he did return, he would be met with anger. He would be in danger. Everyone the son, his brother, the slaves and hired hands, and all the villagers thought the son was on a one-way trip. Everyone that is, except the father. Throughout all of this, the father is silent. He does not ask questions why the son is leaving, or where he is going. He does not argue or get angry. He does not ground him son, his son or put him on restrictions. He simply divided his property between the two sons. Many years ago, when my brother was a small child, 
He decided he had to run away from home. He was mad at mom and dad. So he had to leave and there was no other way around it. With pen and paper in hand, he went to my dad and asked, how do you spell running? R-U-N-N-I-N-G. Okay, thanks dad. Now how do you spell away? A-W-A-Y. He finished his note and he was off to the distant country. After all, that is what discontented children, and even children who do bad things, do. For so we have come to believe. My brother sat in his wagon at the end of the driveway for a long time before finally returning home. For so long we have heard and understood the story of the prodigal son as one about sin. We hold the two sons up as examples. The younger son, the bad son, runs away and does even worse things. The older son, the good son, was always at home. He never disobeyed. The implication is obvious. Be the obedient servant, servant child to your Heavenly Father. The difficulty is that the whole good and bad contrast rarely transforms life. Love, however, can and does transform life. Is this story even about being a good and obedient son? Is it even about the son? Maybe this story is more about the father than it is about the son. Maybe this story is about love and grace more than it is about sin. Luke introduces the story by saying there was a man. From the beginning, the focus is on the father. Although we do hear about the son's journey, it is always in relation to the father. The father is the one who has made it possible for the son to leave. To the extent that this is about the son, it is primarily about the son as recipient of their father's love. The father's love is so strong and so big that it does not possess the other but is willing to let go. His love is so strong and so big that it makes no demands, but is willing to wait patiently. It is a love that forgives and welcomes home. His love will not rescue us out of or stop us from going to the distant country. Oh no. Instead, it redeems the time spent and the life lived in that place. That is good news for those of us who travel to the distant country. And we all do go there at some point or another. Some write notes and run away from home. Some ask for and squander their inheritance, and some, like the older son, fume in silent resentment. Sorrow, grief, and loss take some to the distant country, while fear 
shame and embarrassment take others. Some will travel to the distant country by way of addictions and self-destructive behaviors. For others, the journey of guilt, self-condemnation, or even self-hatred ends in the distant country. However we get there, the distant country is that place in which we are lost, dead, and hungry. In the distant country, we are lost to ourselves, empty of meaning, and starving for life, love, and hope. We are just not ourselves in the distant country, or at least not our true selves. Life stinks in the distant country. That is the great of the distant country. While we may go there, we eventually come to ourselves and discover that it is not a place we want to stay. Regardless of why we go there, the things we have done, or the amount of time spent in the distant country, we can always, always go home. Yet if we go home, we have to face the villager. We will meet all those many voices that live within us. You did not really think you could come home. After what you have done, they do not want you there. You are covered in pigsty. They will not take you back. You were not even worthy. You never were. The only way home it seems is to deny that we are our father's children. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. The Father, however, knows that love is the real way home. That is why the Father runs out to meet his Son. He is there to protect him from the villager, to see him safely home. The father stands between his son and the villager. The best rope, sandal, a ring, banquet. Over and over the father recommits himself to his runaway come home. Where are you? in your journey. Hmm. Leaving home, the Father offers freedom of choice, and you are loved. In the pig pants of life, well, the Father waits patiently and you are loved. Are you coming home right now? The Father will protect you 
and you are loved. Are you finally home? The Father has prepared a banquet for you, and you are loved. It matters not where we are on this journey. The Father always trusts his love for his children. And more than he does the words, decisions, and actions of his children. How can we do any anything less? Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this story about two sons, both loved by their father. A story about you and me, loved by God. A story about the people in these pews and the people outside these walls, loved by God. Whether we have wandered off and have lost our way, or whether we have stayed on course, but lost heart, God is waiting to welcome each and every one of us home. This day and forever, this is the word of God for us today. All thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and, and loving God, we come to you today aware that there have been times in our life journey where we have indeed wandered off, gone our own way, and decided that we could do things so much better without you. We may still be in that place, or we may be coming home, or found our way home right now. Whatever our journey and our story is, we are so thankful that you never lose your love and belief in each one of us, that you are always here to embrace and welcome us home through every circumstance. Help us not to take this for granted, God, but to live in a way that shines your immense love and joy in others around us. May we truly be the light that shines in our communities, churches, around the world. We give ourselves into your hands on this fourth Sunday in our Lenten season and ask that as we walk closer to the cross that you would walk close with us, guiding us, loving us, keeping us strong and rich in your compassion. We pray as well today, God, for Ukraine, for all those who have suffered, who've been displaced, who've lost members of their family, their homes, their neighborhoods. We pray 
for your amazing peace and strength, compassion and love to surround them. May they find rest for their souls in moments when they can gather close and just be at peace. We pray as well for NATO, United Nations, and the European Union. They are, they are making difficult decisions, God, but we know that you are guiding us with your discernment and wisdom. And may that always be grounded deeply in love, compassion, and peace. We thank you for that, God. And we, we finally pray for our faith communities of Morgan Point and also East United Church. We are your communities of faith among many here in Wainsley, Fort Colburn, and Welland. And we thank you that you gather us as community, that you guide us in our relationship, and you strengthen our faith through conversations with one another. May we continue to journey with one another throughout this Lenten season and beyond. Let us now pray in the silence of our hearts. We thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these, our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> that you are loved and cared for by our God, and that you are home with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the faithful friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>